some other stuff. Yeah, so Jimmy McClure is 2-0 with Buzz Rock right now. Um, oh, he switched back to Buzz Rock. He was switched back to Buzz Rock. I saw him. Wow. So Jimmy McClure, uh, we'll probably got to try to get him on here, too. Uh, that's all I recognize for sure. I don't know who else, what else the top tables are playing right now. It's a combination of Zorark, Malamar, and Buzzwell. <laughs> yeah, Zorark, that's all we Malamar, know. and Buzzwell. And Kevin Baxter. And Kevin Baxter with his... Uh, with his... His... Uh, Ultra Beast Box Jank. deck, Ultra Beast as he's Jank. calling it. He's <laughs> Hopefully we'll get to see Ultra Beast Jank. Yeah, I'm, I'm making a joke, I think, with when we, you know, Kevin Kevin does, is just playing, our friend Kevin Baxter is playing a, uh, Alternate Cosma, an Alternate Cosma, B-String you know, Elixir. It's B-String Elixir with, with Dawn Wings, but no Malamars or Inkays, and, you know, so we were joking that every round he should look through his deck and be like, oh, I don't have my, I priced all four Inkay, <laughs> you know, uh, so if I got him on stream, I'm gonna make, you know, I'm gonna talk about how he priced all four Inkay, even though he really didn't. But he is 2-0, he's played two buzzers. I mean, rock. imagine you don't know that they're not playing me. Malamar, and you just see them set up right. with no ink. You're right. probably laughing yourself. You're like, right. oh my god, I got this game. <laughs> then the yeah. B-strings come in. The <laughs> Alrighty. Looks like we're about to get started. I think we're drawing some raffles this round. Are we doing raffles? Wait, what? Yeah, I think we're doing, oh, not these raffles, but the, the tournament raffles, like the, re the regular tournament raffles. Good. I need time to enter my tickets into the raffle. No, they're, they're, those aren't totally end of Swiss. You want to explain the, what, what's going on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so while we're in some limbo here, this tournament is for Nick Bailey and uh, Brain Cancer Research. Nick is a player from uh, Maslin, Ohio, so about an hour and a half south of here. He was diagnosed with brain cancer in 2015, and he passed away last or two Augusts ago, so almost two years ago. Um, and we ran a tournament the first year he was diagnosed to raise money for his treatment. And ever since then, we had done now donating this money to defeatgbm.org, which is a research uh, organization. Um, so it's great. I mean, the first year we had 49 master or 49 total players. Uh, tw we skipped 2016, and then 2017 we had 64, and this year we have 72. So we we have upped our expectations every year. Um, and it's been a wonderful event. We've raised, uh, we raised over $1,500 last year and $3,000 our first year. How much money are we coming in to this event having um, raised already? Already $6,000 Six because, uh, because of Dead Draw Gaming when they did their 28 hour live stream. Um, so starting with them, they raised, over, yeah, they raised, well, no, uh, 5000 something, almost 6000 I almost think. Almost 6000 okay. Um, maybe more with bits involved, with Twitch bits. Um, so. Uh, they have that money, and then we are going to be raising however much entry fees, our raffles, our other donations. We're, we don't know yet, but uh, I know round one hadn't even started yet, and we already had $300 in raffles. Uh, so, yes, yes, we did know Nick personally. Um, and most people here probably do, I think, besides from the kids. Uh, Nick was a very prominent player in the area, and he, he got a, two back-to-back -back worlds invites in 2014 and 2015. Um, before he got too sick. People have and come from all people over. People have come from all over. Lots of our friends come up every year and drive, you know, six hours to stay um, for this tournament, and it's been a wonderful time. Natalie has been the one who's been running these tournaments yes, these last I have, three years. Yes, I have done this. I have organized, organized and of course, thanks to Brock Farch and Chris Panzone. Um, Brock, uh, Brock is RTO for this tournament, and Chris is the owner of the store. Um, they both pitched the idea to me, actually, and it was wonderful, and I'm, I'm so grateful for them and, and for all of this. Um, so it looks like JW is... Going first. Or no, actually, no, Nick went first. Uh, Did he get a, an he energy off the elixir? He, JW, I don't think JW played a Bridget down. I think he ultra balled. Uh, yeah, you want to go... I'm going to go tell them. All right, make sure. Before he goes back into his deck or anything. <laughs> Sometimes we just assume the Bridget's in there, you know? No, Sir Pandas, don't worry. Oh, he's, get, he's getting the Bridget now. We've got it. We've got it. We got it. I mean, he doesn't want that Bridget in his deck nope, that's anyways. Okay. It's a bad that's card. That's okay, Sir Pandage. It's a good question. Um, so, yeah, no, I had to stop. I, I'm like, I'm pretty sure Ultra Ball Play Lay just slammed those that three basics down. That is a good catch, Natalie. Good uh, catch. Now, starting the Mew is very unfortunate. All right, so let's talk about Nick's start here, right? Yeah. He started turn one. We have no Inkays on board. No, it's looking really bad for Nick. And this is not Kevin Baxter's list. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, this is actually this actually has Inkays in it. This he has Malamars in it. Um, and it looks like I mean it is unfortunate for JW starting that Mew, but I don't think he's gonna get punished for it considering. Oh, Nick's oh got, my goodness. Nick's got a horrible hand. Okay, right so now. you have to put an energy on Hoopa and just start swinging. Yeah, right? I, I mean, think that's so. the only thing you can do I right now. I think so. Um, looks the, like JW did the single puzzle. I don't know if he's got much else in his hand going on. They might, both might be bricking right yeah. now. The good thing about Hoopa's 
uh, HP is its 130, so obviously the Oracle is not going to take a knockout. Right. Well, now it can because it's 48, 40 damage yeah. on the. Looks like uh, he used. What did he? He copied Hoopa's attack. He copied Hoopa's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we do see one Inke, but no draw supporter. Right. This does not look good at all. Right. So I'll see what JW. Uh, JW might have gotten some cards off his puzzle. Uh, so it looks like he's going to hit, yeah, 40, 20 on the Wimp Bada like that. I almost wonder if Nick should have just used his Guzma to Maybe. pull up Wimpot and stick it in the active. Because, because yeah. JW's going to go off this turn. I mean, he's got Zorark out and Cynthia. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I don't know. It's a tough call. I mean, you know, it, hopefully, I think Nick's attachment to the bench was saying that, you know, say I get a Malamar out, I can at least attack with my Mewtwo. Uh, but it doesn't look like he's got much else going on. Uh, he's going to need a top deck here. And honestly... Copying Hoopa's attack is huge here because Mewtwo is now in one hit range for Zorark. Right. Hoopa is now in one hit range for Zorark. Right, yeah. So he's, I mean, JW's, that's a great attack for JW to copy on. Uh, it's, ooh. Right. Oh my is goodness. He gonna cro uh, do, if he's got the. I think he's just going to ride his beating here, right? No. Oh, he's, he's got a crossing cut. I think, maybe. Yeah, he wants to get that Mew out of the active. He want, yeah. I mean, that's I think, huge. Honestly, I don't even think there's much to worry about, but it's probably good that he's getting that Mew out of the active. Is he going to. I think he just no, armor pressed. No, I think he pressed. just armor pressed. Yep. Oh, armor yeah. Armor press seems like what he did there. Yeah, there's something you really want to retreat into. I would, I would say maybe get a Mew, you know, Mew to the bench if his board was better, but it looks like... Do we have a draw supporter from... Cynthia. No, we got a Cynthia. Okay. Cynthia. So this game is not over yet. No. We got some, uh, some, a few more turns to go. But we're seeing a pattern, right? We saw Frank play Malamar. Yes. Didn't set up that great. No. We're seeing Nick play Malamar. Doesn't seem to be setting up that great. No. I mean, is this a consistent deck? I think so, but it does need, I think, you know, we were trying to compare it to Eels, and I think Eels was in a format where things were a lot slower. Right, The yeah. real only thing that, that could really, like, target down and overwhelm Eels was, like, a Landorus deck. Mm. Um, so we played the 40 HP Tynamos for that, too, right? You played the 40 HP, yeah. You played, you played, uh, you, you played the Thunder Wave Tynamos and stuff. But, um, so I think, I mean, the oh deck is... Oh, my goodness. This draw oof. does not look very good. I mean, he's got the stretcher, so that's not... Um, end of the world. He might go in with, if he's got a way to retreat, he might go in with Hoopa again, or he can Hypnosis. Oh, no, we he's have gonna... one Malamar out. That is that is not bad. Um, he can at least load up the Mewtwo. Yep. Um, but I don't think he can retreat. But I mean, what do you do with this Mewtwo? Mm. Like, I don't see anything. At best, he can take a knockout on that Mew, Mew X with it, but uh, now this Mew X is about to go down. Or, I mean, the Malamar is about to go down. I mean, JW has Guzma. If he wants to take out this Mewtwo right now, he yeah. can. He might want to, I think. Um... He's trading first. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna go for it. No? He might be ace rolling. That's a good, uh, I think that's a good play. What deck would you have played if you weren't commentating, Otto? Oh, Sir Pandage, ah. Uh, Something listen. Bowl. <laughs> yeah, Natalie would have played Buzzball for sure. Something with Buzzball. Listen, right. I'm not a fan of the triangle, so I think I would have played something spicy. Yeah, something spicy. Dust main garb seems fun. Yeah. Um, all right, so, oh, yeah, I, I think that's fine, honestly. That Mewtwo isn't really threatening anything, and he ace a roll of the Mew off the board. So yeah. now there's nothing that Mewtwo can really do, besides maybe knock out Wimpot, which isn't, I mean, you know, whatever. This Mewtwo is in one shot range. Right. Um, it's, I just you don't know, even know what I don't think there's anything that can do. He's got honestly. a stretcher for the for the NK, obviously. Right. I don't think there's anything Nick can really do here. Um, that Mew being on the board was like the one thing he had out to, like maybe take a quick two prizes and be able to set up after that. And, uh, you know, I don't know. It seems bad. This matchup is already pretty bad for Malamar. And I know Nick took out the Marshadow before the tournament he did. started. Ooh, so, so that's rough. I, I, uh. I don't know what he can do, but we'll hope. <laughs> well, we will we'll hope here. We'll see what he can do, man. Make us a game. Uh, Nick is a phenomenal player, so we'll see what yes, he Nick, has in Nick store for us. Nick got top eight here uh, last year at the Nick Bailey Open. JW is a great player, regional champion. He's been, he has been very busy with work this year, but he flew all the way from Florida for this. <laughs> JW so flew shout out to JW. Florida. He's great. All right, so he's going for what? An NK off this? Probably. He's got to set up another NK. I mean, I can't imagine. Everything feels bad, though. I think he treasures for an NK, stretches for an NK, and then he's got that Sycamore in his hand, right? right? He just goes in. Yep, we see Looks him like eyeing the NK. That. There he is. Yeah, here's an NK. Oh, I hear Nick talking about the Lele. <laughs> I think Nick might have prized his Lele. That's why he might be pointing oh, at the Oh, yeah, Lele. might be pointing it out. We saw him look through his deck several times, too. That's unfortunate. And we know the Malamar decks only play one anyway, so...
looks like he's probably, yeah, you're probably right. He's probably going to stretch her for an NK back into Sycamore. Yep. If I have to guess. I think he stretches just, yeah. Just like the NK. He, he could put in the Malamar back in, but I, I don't, I think don't so. think that's safe. Oh, oh he's going for the Hoopa. Interesting. He might just try to hit into that thing and, like, you know, wall with the Hoopa, I guess. I mean, again, the Hoopa does, you know, it can't get one shot by Zorark or Glissopod, so it, it is important here, I think. Oh, yeah, I will link the Hefonte thread where I'm posting some of the. Um, some of the pairings and things like that. Here's the link. Um, and you can do the donate command if you want to see the PayPal pool, if you are just a watch, uh, just watching and can't make it. Um, and the PayPal pool ends, I think, tomorrow at midnight or whatever I feel like ending it. So um, I'll probably do the donations once the week, day, week starts because we have to wait for everything to clear. Um, and I'm excited to see how much we we raise this year. I think it's a it's our biggest year yet. We have so many raffle prizes. So many people brought things. It was so unreal generous. Unreal amount it, of raffle uh, prizes. Unreal amount of raffle prizes. We're gonna have we're gonna have to set up like an area that has doubled the amount of space next year and just use some of the stuff that we got. There might be close to a thousand dollars in raffle prizes. I think so. I think so. I mean, somebody donated a whole Owen Robinson. Shout out to Owen Robinson. Donated a whole booster box. Um, you know, uh, we have tons of great prizes. Andrew Mahone put out his first edition PSA eight. He did. Uh, first edition PSA eight. Neo Lugia. Neo Lugia. Unreal. It's pretty cool. Um, we have some crazy stuff here. We see Nick getting the setup that he, he wishes he had. Turn three, one. three in case. This three, is the, yes. the setup he wishes he had turn one. But it's, so, it might like not that, be too late. I like that he goes in and swings in that with the Hoopa. The Hoopa's kind of a pain to knock out. Um, you know, make JW have to work for it. And it's going to um, soften up some targets here, too, which right, is pretty absolutely. important. So JB's got Evo Soda. He's going to have all that other one pod. Now, I wonder if he should have put the Hoopa 20 damage on Zorark. Because um, we know that Necrozma GX yeah. with three energies is short of knockouts on Zora. He might so, be trying to just take out both Galissapods at this point, but I think um, I feel like Zorark is, is Zorark the scary is, is the scarier card in this matchup. I think so too. I think it's probably best if he puts that twenty damage on the Zoraks. Um, I mean he could just be saying, I'm gonna get four energy on my on my he might be trying to go for a black ray too. Yeah, that that could make sense as well. I mean there's um, five yeah, You can't ace to roll all those things in one turn. <laughs> that so. is true. <laughs> the Mew down again. JW is uh I, oh I wonder if JW has the knockout on the Oh on this Necrozma. I mean oh. Nick took the risk putting a two prize down. Ooh. This is huge. That's a punish JW Island. is gonna go down to two prizes. I mean Nick has only one prize that's left on the board after this, but JW only had two prizes. Yeah, JW's got a commanding board position right now. You know, he doesn't really, he doesn't even need to care about that Musi X2 prize that it's giving up. Um, now hopefully Nick can take a knockout on this Mew, because it is weak to psychic. It so. is, yeah. Oh, he's going in. He needs Malamar. He needs a float stone. I don't know if he got any of the things that he needed. I see an Ultra Ball, and I see a Psychic Energy. He needs, I mean, he's he's got no way to retreat that thing, too. I think it's got two retreat, maybe three. Yep, he, I know he's only playing three floats. Wait, stones, how much retreat so. does, uh, yeah, it's got two, okay. It's got two, yeah. Thank you, thank you for the image, Jimmy. <laughs> um, Portal yeah. Strike. I think that's the one. Dawn Wings, oof, that's rough. I don't know about that, I think. I mean, it's the only way he can get a not uh, get this an attack is off so this turn. This is so rough. But there's really nothing he can do, honestly. Like, yep. you know, maybe putting that Dawn Wings down will lose him the game next turn, but he probably is going to lose a game in two turns anyway. Yep. If rate. JW has a Guzma and he can Zorark, uh, ride is beating. Ride is beating this knockout. I mean, he he takes the game. Um, That's the other thing about Zorpod. It's like JW can see all the cards JW's he wants to see. JW's got so much access to like lots of his deck. I mean, he haven't seen puzzles yeah, come out Nick, yet. I think Nick's going to hand me some psychics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> So one psychic recharge, she should she see an attachment from yep. hand. And portal strike. Portal strike. <laughs> Goodbye, man. I think JW guys, just has it. Yeah, I think it looks like he's, he's looking putting up a glist spot. Yeah, there's we'll, I see him and looking through. See one puzzle. There's a DC. Do we have a Guzma? There's a Guzma. Alright, so JW uh, nice. will ride is speeding this Necrozma GX fourth game. Yep. yep. There we go. Yep, there we go. Unfortunate draws there for Nick. Tough matchup too. Uh, we'll get the guys out here. We have JW first and talk about their matchup. Sounds oh. good.
need it more time? Huh? Pretty good. Good stuff. <laughs> All right, here he comes. The big bad JW. Right. Hello, Otto. You were excited to see Malamar. Am I wrong? Um, I mean, I think Zorg is good against Malamar, so... That's what you good. wanted to see today, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I like Malamar. I like, um, you know, I like a lot of things. I like... There's really... Not a deck that I'm afraid of, so. So talk to me about some of the plays that you went through. You ace rolled of the Mew, right? You need uh, to get that out. Uh, yeah, well, the ace roller was big. That was just like kind of what I had. I, I wouldn't have felt bad retreating it necessarily, but it was just kind of what I had. I wanted to get it off the field. I didn't want to give them an easy two prizes. Um, but uh, anyway, it was like there was another play I think that was kind of nice. I mean, not really that good, but I played like a single puzzle one time. I just really wanted to make sure that I could get like a draw supporter. I think my top deck was going to be N. I really didn't want to N him, but I was able to rearrange with the puzzle to get a Cynthia. Um, that was, I mean, that was probably like the like neatest play in that game. I mean, it was pretty pretty straightforward. So. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we saw you go in, yeah. take out some prizes. I mean. I don't know what, like, Malamar needs to kind of get there. It seems tough. Well, right? I actually, I mean, I was kind of scared, because when you start Mew against a Psychic deck, you're like, That's true. Ah, I mean, but know? when you saw him not bench any in case turn one, yeah. you got to be feeling and great. And actually, right? actually, actually, what was huge was that he didn't, that he started the hyperspace. Right. Um, it could have come into play if he had actually drawn things, because I was the able bench to copy. was huge. I was able to copy it was hyperspace. Huge. Yes, and we Mewtwo, were talking about Mewtwo that. Mewtwo is actually really um, tough for, like, Zorark to deal with. The Hoopa as well, because because it's 130 HP. Yeah, right. right. The Hoopa, the Hoopa's kind of tough. You soften um, both of them up and set knockouts on Right, but the ho the thing about the Hoopa is that you have, um, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't have pressure, so, so yeah, if you get The bench get damage 20, would have been reduced, no, yeah. Right, yep. exactly. Yep. exactly. That makes sense. So, so because Mewtwo can't be knocked out, can't, Mewtwo can't be one-shot by anything but Mew. Right. Which is generally, like, late in the game, like a bad trade. Yeah, you're not going to want to come up and Right, right. Blow you up. I think Nick kind of accelerated his loss a little bit just with by benching the EXs. I mean, obviously, like, I was able to take four prizes and two I turns. mean, we saw him need to put the Dawn Wings He needed to put the to Dawn reset, Wings. Yes, right? but he didn't need to put, he didn't need to play down the, in the cross. In the cross. I agree, I agree. And that, and I was like, uh, I don't know if it would have made a difference. I think I was too far ahead because I would have just used him like a Malamar or something, you know, and, and I think it was just over at that point. But I think he might have made a little bit better play just by not dropping it as when he did. No, so. that makes sense. I mean, I feel like he also had to take a risk at the same he time. He had to take a risk at the same time, for sure. Yeah, but, I mean, I had a nine-card hand. He knew I had the Mew and the double colorless because I had just ace roll it the turn before. So all I needed to find was a Guzma. I had two, um, you know, two Zorar guys up and uh, a nine-card hand. So I mean, we saw you never miss a card that you needed to play that day, Yeah, for right? sure, for that's sure. You know, point, I, right? Well, I ran real hot. I ran real hot, I will say that. Um, I mean, that's how the deck's supposed to run, you know, to be supposed honest. to draw cards. Yeah, you're supposed to draw cards, <laughs> and I drew cards, and he didn't end me, and, like, life is good, so. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you, uh, you're 3-0 now? Yeah, 3-0. You're looking forward to playing pretty much anything, right? I feel like yeah, Zorpod is so. a good matchup against a lot well, of Well, I really don't want to play Andrew's, uh... Garbador. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like the only one up there. He's right? like the only one up there, but he, he, I he's don't know, two he's, and one anyway. So he's two and one right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Oh wait, he I won. don't know. If, I don't know if he won this last round. Oh, so. Okay, he lost against Riley. So yeah, he's so not in he's your one and one. Yeah. Okay, so I, I would imagine that. I mean, he's a great player, so I would imagine he goes two and one. Right. And you uh, could get down. That's there. what I don't want to face. Um, it could be. I mean, it could be fine. Obviously, Riley beat him, but. Um, uh, but uh, it was, you know, it was fun. We had we had a good time playing. Like it's good to draw cards. Uh, <laughs> it's good to play one energy attackers that like can't get one shot. You guys and, are both uh, playing the same list, right? Yeah, I'm um, here. Right, we got right, both right. Zoropod players here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I don't know if I can see him. Uh, that chips. Skirt. No more chips. Skirt. All right, guys. Quick question here. Zoropod has the second most CP this season of any deck besides Buzz Rock. Uh -huh. So, I mean, and it's probably way less played, right? You could get in, you could hop in back here. Oh, there we go. There no, we we're go. in there, we're in there. Okay. And yeah. it's probably way less played. So does that mean that, statistically speaking, you have the highest chance of earning championship points with Zoropod? That's a good point. It's like a very safe deck. Like you can, yeah. it's like it does its thing almost every game. That's what I've noticed the more I play it, is like I don't really not execute my game plan. It's just well, a question of I think it, so it probably loses to Lycanroc's order. 
It it's does. Close. It does. I think it's close. But I though, think right? I think the way we built our deck brings it a lot closer because we can finesse more around the fact that they have gust effects with our like our counter catcher counter and stuff right. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it lets us uh, it lets us play further around Lycanroc. Obviously, yeah, yeah. I still think Lycanroc objectively is the best Zoroark deck against other Zoroark decks. Mm. Sure, 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 um, sure. But like we just have such good matchups in the field. Like the healing is yeah, good. Right Fast now, typing sure. is really good. Right. Armor press has been insane for me today. Okay, yeah. yeah. I haven't. I haven't actually had a real did, good chance. Did you to just use win, it? Riley? I did real? just win. Okay. I beat Kevin Baxter just now. Oh, you beat Kevin Baxter. Uh -huh. Looks like we're not seeing Kevin Baxter on stream, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, you might. You never no, know. You never, you never know. know. His okay. deck's really good though. We well, worked did, on it last night. How did that go? Uh, it was very close. Were I mean, his deck. His deck's very reliant on B string, and he plays like max potions and stuff. So that way, you like, it's harder to like finesse by spreading. Oh, okay. Um, I was able to get there. Uh, just one one bit of damage stuck, and that was enough for me to close out the game. That's basically all you need is like yeah, one right. hit to stick. Right, because you want to be able to knock out two uh, right. GXs in the same, like, in back to back. back, so, to that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that he only gets one turn. And I did that with So that he only gets one turn of B-string. With yeah, counter catchers yeah. and ends, like, compounded on that, it was just so good. Like, yeah, exactly. I really like that card. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So, so, but we see Kevin's deck doesn't have Malamar in it, right? And we've seen no, two Malamar. <laughs> <laughs> Probably every game he prizes four and K. Uh -huh. And we saw two Malamar decks on stream day. We saw Frank round one, and we just saw um, who was playing it up. Nick Baker. And we saw Nick Baker playing it this past round. Yeah. And yeah. they just never seemed to set up. Well, I mean, is Malamar just not a consistent deck? I asked Natalie the same it's, question. It's not. It's not. It's just no. inherently not consistent. Once it's up, the engine like takes care of itself. But getting there is like a climb sometimes. It's well, I think the format's too fast, a little too fast for it. Like, yeah, Eels, I mean, I Eels was good because the format was a little a slower, slower, and you had a little bit um, better like attackers. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I think Psychic has that. better attackers. Actually, that that might be true. But for the format, you had fine attackers, uh, a good variety. But it's too slow right now. I think you know you have you have a uh, Buzzwool that you know can take wins off Malamar. You know that should just be an auto loss like typing wise, <laughs> but it's not. And um, right, you know, and then against like Zorark, they just you know. Malamar doesn't draw cards, and Zorark draws cards. So I, I think I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the deck that draws cards. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Riley, oh, you're getting drawing. a shout out from Sir Pandage. Oh yeah, Sir Pandage, love you, man. What's going on, buddy? Okay, so one more question. Buzz Rock is an aggressive deck, right? I mean, it's like it's a sure. just an aggressive deck. Yeah. Why play a safe? Deck like Zoropod over an aggressive and consistent deck like Buzzrock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's good. That's a good question. I think, well, okay. you can go ahead. You go well, ahead. I think I think the I think the Lycan Rock kind of falls a little bit because it the biggest attacker in your deck needs two energy. Mm -hmm. to do things so so it's a little bit more you can get you know if somebody plays an enhanced hammer if they play a catcher or something or you know a gust effect right uh, they can bring that up knock it out or, or remove the energy and it sets you back really far or yeah. alternatively you bridge it first turn and you don't have an energy in hand and then, and then you're, behind you're behind like you can't just attack with Zoroark uh, generally like you that's your draw engine you want to keep those on the bench and have other things to go up so why play something safe I mean uh, I don't know. It, it still feels kind of strong. I feel, I feel like, like I we also like compensate in our build, like with the addition of the second catcher, um, with the addition of some of our consistency cards. Like our strategy executes really well, and even if we fall behind, we have like, outs to get back. Gust plus yeah. N with catcher is nuts. Yeah, that's it's true. It's nuts. That's what we realized in our testing is like we we wanted to do that all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like multiple times a game. Yeah. And you yeah, didn't yeah. want to puzzle for it. You didn't want to mallow for it. You want right. to draw those catchers and just do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. and that's that's added a lot to our game plan. That's basically how Lycanroc plays. Honestly, you like Lycanroc artillery's up. You Lycanroc, you know, baby things on the bench. They're getting charged up. Yeah. Have but you guys instead, played against any Buzzrock today? Yes, I played one round one. I played against Wes uh, Parch, and he was playing it. Um, you know, it, it kind of did uh, it did Buzzrock things. You know, whiffed a couple real nice. Um, you know, Max Elixir's first turn that would have like really you know been good for him, um, and then but I was able to, yeah same strategy so I I catch it up his you know one play I had was I catch it up his his lele and then I paralleled him so he had a full bench and so he had to discard uh, no, he had boy. to discard an attacker uh, and he had to discard late game versus Buzzwell is yeah, actually yeah. nuts yeah well it wasn't even late game it was like mid game but yeah, he, he had a, a he had a lele bench, he had a lele down so I'm like ah lele that's a horrible attacker so gust that up <laughs> and then parallel him and I had to pass that turn but I basically got rid of two of his attackers or like his remorade and his his other Buzzwell baby Buzzwell and I was like that felt like a good turn you know even yeah, though I had to pass it. so but in a field of Buzzwell how would you feel playing this deck uh, average. I feel like compared to Lycanroc, I like this deck better. But doesn't this deck feel better because you know there's Malamar in the format? Like if we Zorak see Malamar start to play less, 
if like we see less Malamar on the format because obviously it's way less consistent. Sure. Doesn't that sure. make Zoroark's like primacy yeah, a little you're, less? Yeah, you're totally right. Well, I, I think mean, I also feel like Zoroark is just like so good against like rogue decks. You know, like mm. unless they're built to beat Zoroark, like Zoroark draws so many cards. Right. It, you know, it sees all these. It doesn't things. lose to gimmicks, really. It, it, no, because yeah, right. you draw so much right. that you can like power through a lot of decks. Whereas okay. Boswell can get true. like finessed by random stuff. Yeah, I think yeah. that's true. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. Exactly. And we exactly. see Lapras coming up. The Galispod could yeah. be really. Oh, really Galispod is not. Do you play against Lapras? Right? I, I played against Lapras too. Eh? I played against <laughs> Dion Lunsford. Um, I mean, it was, sure it was an easy matchup, it was right? Great. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I didn't quite get to see his full, uh, his oh, full like thing. Well, he prized his Volcanion, which he said after the match, like, yeah, it might have been good to like spread and switch. Me out and reset stuff, the so. glow spot though. <laughs> well, reset the glow spot, <laughs> and then I come back in. Yeah, um, but you know, it's uh, it is what it is. I, I won because you know, he has to play Manaphy down, he has to play Lapras down, and uh, right, you know, free prizes, prizes. Yeah. Yeah. for this yeah. spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every so time. You don't even need to hit it for weakness. <laughs> no, yeah, you just first impression for a knockout. That feels real good. That I'm sure. Take two prizes for a clean first. Oko is yeah. amazing. Mm, I agree. Yep, <laughs> yep. All right, guys. Well, uh, what are you guys uh, looking forward to playing now? I mean, what's up, what's up at the top tables? What are we, I mean, what else are we seeing other. up there? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. A mirror sure. does not sound fun. No, no, no. no. Mirror is probably going to be real bad. Real grind. Um, Depends who goes first, too, and who hits hands. It might end up in like a deck out kind of situation. <laughs> honestly. Yeah, yeah. Well, because it's going to be hard if you play the mirror because you're like trying not to take up? a prize oh, yeah. to activate counter I, catcher, but then you're trying to set up your board and, and heal. Yeah, and heal. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, it's a roll. Yeah, so might be able to get you on stream. Talk then later. See what happens. See what happens. Yeah, I'm not. We're not. I at least don't really know what's up there at this point. I mean, maybe you got Alex. Possible. Alex is three zero. Okay. What? What is he playing? Uh, he's playing the Zark, like Zark. Latios. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, Latios. Latios might be. Latios right. seems good. The spread. Oh, I gotta really yeah. get in here. Uh, uh, we got uh, Alex Holt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So oh, wearing a shirt very layers. similar to mine. Is that why? Yeah. yeah. Oh, a, yeah. I'm like I don't see myself. <laughs> So. Okay, well, yeah. Uh, how have you liked uh, commentating? It's fun. Otto? Yeah. I get to see moves. I get to think about them. What, have been, what has been your like best match? The best match to watch so far was Andrew versus Riley. Nailbiter. Mm, Insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge okay. rivalry how, going into it, too. How did, uh, how did the... Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Of course. How, uh, I saw it was like one-to-one -one like, prizes at the end, so yeah, how yeah. did you win? Uh, I end myself and hit... I end him to one because he had no way to win the following no. turn. Uh, okay. One. Oh, okay. Needed, so you had an extra... Three cards and he, had an extra he, he traded. Yeah, he needed three cards to win, and then I, I see. But then I ended up trading. He traded the new I had you in my hand. I traded away something else. And I drew uh, like a grass energy. Oh yeah, yeah. Street person impression. Yeah, 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 with a mute. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it was, was nice. like a belted buzzball, and I just okay. Yeah, it was that's nice. Really good. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Because Riot's beating would not have gotten there. So. No, no, I only had three Pokemon on my bench. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep. So it on one sixty. Yep. And Andrew just the turn before got a four prize turn as well. Yeah, yeah. With Jeff he ended him in four prize turned him too. Yeah, Insane. Yeah. Oh, that was nuts. That was nuts. Wait, four prize turn. Yeah, he can. He, he put sixty on Mew, Mew and knocked it out. Zork. Put thirty on the Zorak, oh, knocked that out too. Oh my god. Yeah. So, so Andrew ball. was primed. Yeah. He, didn't, he missed V-Strings the whole game. It was so oh, crazy. Oh, he missed. Well, that's the thing, too, is you, you, you'll do that. Any deck that plays V-String takes that risk. I mean, seven seven fighting, too. My goodness. You know. It's a low amount, and sometimes that ends up being a problem. Like, you, like if you attach a bunch early just because that's your only attachments, like, you have situations where you have, like, three V-Strings, and you can't even play them all. Yeah, we saw so many fighting on the board. I was like, even if he gets one, I don't know how many energy you can get out. So. Right. I mean, especially if, like, a couple are prized. Yeah, V-String becomes, like, uh, feast or famine a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. you know? it, does. Yeah. it does. Yeah. Especially with this deck, where you don't have max Lixers. Yeah, right. Right. So, I mean, he's just jet punching every turn. So. I mean, it seems good. Yeah, punch is a good jet attack. Punch jet is punch is especially with Garb. Man. And fighting That's the belt. scariest matchup. I don't want to face Garb. I do not want to face Garb. I don't like my strategy being turned off. Like I just want, yeah, exactly. I just want to do my thing. Exactly. Are you guys running the two or three kill bars? Just the two. Just the two. Oh boy, yeah, that yeah. is scary. So we, we, we like mutually agree that we don't need three. Yeah, like <laughs> like parallel, <laughs> parallel Garb fighting fear belts. Really scary. And the thing is, scary. I actually didn't end up. Uh, I didn't end up field blowing this Garb. I just KO'd it. I yeah, never yeah. field blowed it. Oh yet. really? I mean, he did. Okay. He only got up for like one turn, and then you knocked yeah. it out. Yeah, I mean that's that's the way the matchup goes a lot with all these Zorak decks. They just KO the Garb. Right. It's hard to get two online. Right, for sure, for sure. And uh, like, how, but how do you do it? You, you, you have to have the goosebun in hand when they put it's up just the guard. Like, I have so many ways to just just do like 120 with one yeah. energy, you know, yeah, right. Zorark or the spot. So yeah. I just like pull yeah. Up. I mean, and it's nice. And, like, I mean, you yeah. can throw up a Zorark. It can take a jet punch. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, right. it's not the same against Buzzrock where you like max oh, like attack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So. <laughs> That's good. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys. Yeah, no of course. Problem, good luck on your next rounds. Hopef